That's right. That's right, sister. You all right. I really enjoyed it. Um, we had a whole... Now, New York and Pennsylvania, settle down, settle down, because today's class is going to be a very interesting class. It's going to help a lot of you young men and some of you sisters. Uh, we had a great time during Passover. Great, great time. Yeah, we, we, we definitely, Bishop, have to thank the sisters, man, who put it together over there. You know, their womb, they was able to, you know what I mean, to pull that thing off. We also want to thank your sister for the good works. Also for the brothers in Atlanta who had put a lot of works in. Yeah, we acknowledge you, brothers. We acknowledge you as well, sis. Continue the good works in Christ. Don't give up. Then we're going to continue walk this walk. We're not going to afraid of the enemy. As a matter of fact, we're going to move while the enemy stand up. We're going to move them out of the way. So your brothers, your sisters, that, that, that stay in the spirit of Christ, uh, give yourself a hand applause. Hey, I really like the, I don't know, did y'all see the fashion show? Did y'all like that thing? That was a first in Israel. That was a first. It's only going to get better. It's going to get better. Next year, I'd like the designers to come out with the clothes they designed. It was great. It's going to get even better. Uh, the music was great. No uh, hiccups with Deacon Yawasop. Stay away from the music, Deacon Yawasop. The music was good. The sound was good. We loved it. Uh, but even Black Wall Street, the black flea market, y'all know what I'm talking about? It was good. That's good. That One was. of the sisters said to me, she said, Bishop, I'm getting my hustle on. I said, you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the meet and greet was good, too. Yeah, like everything, everything was wonderful, Bishop. Mm -hmm. now, now, now you know Yao Sap going uh, to feel a little nervous. Yao Sap, we love you. Yao Sap, we love you. We love you, love you brother. <laughs> now... The meet and greet. I don't know how many of y'all saw the meet and greet with the men and the women. The meet and greet is what uh, inspired today's lesson. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. I gotta say, some of this. Now the brothers was fine, except that one brother who said he was an ordained. Remember that dude, an ordained minister of Satan. I would have never even said that thing. <laughs> He said, I was a once an ordained minister of Satan. Now, he didn't say the Satan part. I'm throwing that in there. That's what it was. Some of the sisters didn't want to go up. And the line with the sisters was long, long. Some sisters went up. Y'all was happy in the spirit. I saw brothers talking to those sisters. Some sisters went up. Y'all went up there sad and depressed. Like you were forced to go up there. You're not forced to go up there. You don't want to take part. You don't take part. But after it, don't complain. Nobody talk to me. Nobody interested in me. You go up there, y'all. My name is such and such. Ain't nobody talking to you. She a problem to herself. And all the women got pissed off when I said, what's your favorite scripture? Why the nigga got to ask me that? Why you got to ask that? What is your favorite scripture? You see women all on the phone. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, girl, I don't know no scripture. You know I don't study. She said, girl, I don't study either. I'm just there. <laughs> wow, y'all don't think the Lord saw all of that? Now, y'all men saw that, right? Yes, sir. You know if the men saw, you know the Lord said, look, look. Hey, hey Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, look. Look at the women. They ain't doing sh nothing down there. Look. Yeah, that mean bishop. You know what you asked was in the spirit. That means that you have to know, you have to have some type of favorite scripture. Mm -hmm. If you study, there have to be some type of scripture that stick with you. No matter what, when you have to go to your phone, sister, they're showing you not studying. One sister said, you know, the Benjamite sister, I think it was her. She said, Psalms 91. I said, what does it say? She said, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my. And in my mind, I'm like, that's not. Psalms 91. But I said, you know what? Okay, I, I let it go. I let it say, okay. You know in church when they have you memorize scriptures, that was her. <laughs> Watch me get a million text messages. Watch. Oh, here you go. How you going to say that about me? Listen, girl. Y'all sisters need to study. And here at IUIC, y'all know we, we encourage marriage. We encourage marriage according to, uh, according to what? According to what do we encourage marriage? You? Just raise your voice. Lift your voice up like a trumpet. What? There you go. According to Hebrews 13, sisters could even quote that one. You know what? If you didn't have a scripture, sister, you could have said, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Everybody knows that. 
their mind didn't even click on that scripture. I said, wow, this is sad. Sister saying, can y'all edit that out? When y'all do the video, can you, like, not show that? No, we're going to show that. That way it will uh, spur you, or what's the word? Uh, it will insp- huh? motivate, you. motivate you, I like that word, to s- inspire you to study. You look at that video and go, damn, I was dumb as a rock. Yeah, that's me. I'm embarrassed. Let me study. Let, my God, let me get my study on. So, again, we didn't study. We encourage marriage. We don't encourage divorce. We don't encourage that. We encourage the twain becoming one flesh. Can we, who's reading for me? Oh, God. Uh, all right. Oh, man. Bishop, I what? went through training, so. You went through training right. for that. Me, I know. Can you get me Matthew 19, verse 5 and 6, please? <laughs> yeah, that's Mercy. his son, though. That's okay. his son. <laughs> wow. Jan came at the age of 16, brothers. That's right. All right, Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. Now, here we go. During the meet and greet, brothers on the stage, we say to the brother, do you have your own place? No, I live with my mother and father. Get off the stage. Just get off. You're not ready to get married. Go ahead. And they twain shall be one flesh. They twain shall be one flesh. Now, the Christian apologetics did a whole video saying that Israelites, mainly IUIC, that we destroy marriages, we encourage divorce. I was like, wow, what a liar this, this sister is. What a liar. You stay puff marshmallow sister. Wow. You are the devil the Bible speaks of. Give me 2 Corinthians 6.14. Christ said the two shall be one flesh. That's what we encourage. Any, if y'all see any other videos that say otherwise, the devil is a liar. So watch this. 2 Corinthians 6.14. Now, this is what the sister, who is a Christian apologetics, these are the scriptures they reject. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not ye unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The Bible says don't be, don't be married. Don't be around people that don't believe. So now when you find yourself in a marriage and a spouse does not believe, what then is going to happen? Divorce is going to happen unless that person says, I'm, I'm pleased to dwell with you. Uh, I'm not going to hinder you. Let me just, you know, I'll learn whatever you want and go along. Maybe in time they will believe. But if that's not the case, the bi- read it again. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That's God's law. There's nothing that we can change about that. So you come in this truth, you find yourself with an unbeliever. Hey, the choice is yours. You have to make it in time. Okay? Because that person is going to hinder you if they are not pleased to dwell with you. And some of you brothers and some of you sisters are in situations just like that. The decision is yours. It's not ours to make. The decision will be yours. Give me 1 Corinthians 7 and 14. This is what I was making reference to. Because what happens when you have a non-believing spouse? This is what happens. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. I'm going to explain the verse. Go ahead. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. So the unbelieving husband who is pleased to dwell with the believer, is he sanctified by the believing wife. Why? Because of her conversation and her, her conduct will influence him. Go ahead. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. And likewise, the unbelieving spouse is sanctified by the believer. Why? Because his conversation, his conduct, is inspiring her, the non-believer, to change in time. Go ahead. Else were your children unclean. Else, if that's not the case, if the unbeliever is not following along with the believer, although they don't believe, your children are unclean. That means what? For example, children see daddy go to the mosque on Friday. Mommy goes to the Christian church on Sunday. And what's going on? The child is confused. Mommy goes here, daddy goes there, and we all at the end of time going to hell. That's what's going to happen. Because you're all messed up. The whole family is un. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. If you're confused, let me know. Let me know. And there's been many situations where you have Christians married to Muslims, Muslims married to Buddhists. It's insane. The children are crazy as hell. Okay? Oh, watch this. Now, we tell all of the couples, 
before you get married to P and P. P and P. What I mean by that? Pray and prove. P and P is an acronym I gave. Pray and prove. Or call it PAP. You better PAP that thing. What do you mean PAP? Pray and prove. Pray and prove. I'm going to give you an example about prayer. Give me 1 John 3.22. This is what the Bible says about prayer. Many sisters, maybe it's not for me to get married. Brothers go, maybe God don't want me to get married. Really? Is that, is that what the Bible says? Let's see. Give me that. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. We're in 1 John, not St. John. We're in 1st First First John. John. Go ahead. And whatsoever we sisters, ask. By the way, that's for them. Go ahead. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Uh-huh. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So if you want a spouse, it says you shall receive because why? We keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now watch this. 1 John 5, 14. Still dealing with prayer. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God's will is his law. If we ask anything according to his law, he heareth us. So now, his law says it is not good that man should what? Be alone. So that means marriage. That was the first law. The law of marriage was the first law instituted for man and woman. I know it was the Sabbath. Then came marriage. Everybody with me so far? Okay. So don't say, well, maybe God doesn't want me. No. He wants you to get married. That's his law. So don't come with that stupid thought. The problem is... Somebody got to change. That's the problem. Abraham in here is looking for Sarah in here. Anna in here is looking for Tobit in here. That's what, that's what it is. Sarah is, not, Sarah is not looking for Rahim, and Abraham is not looking for Shanene. It's not happening. So P and P, pray and prove. The proof part, Sirach 6 and 7. Sirach chapter 6. We all know this one. Sirach 6 and 7. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. See, that's what most people don't do. They don't prove. They don't prove him. I'm going to show you some stuff on that. Give me 1 John 4 and 1. I told you all that when Passover, I mean, we had to meet and greet. I said men lie. Men will promise women the moon if we can get the panties. Ain't that right, brothers? Yes, now they don't want to say that's right. Y'all know that's right. We see a woman we like, we'll, we'll say, I'll give you the star, the sun, the moon, the star. There was a song by a group. What's the name of this group? I'll, I'll give you the sun, the moon. What is it? As yet. Yeah, that song was true. Y'all don't know that song? You young boys don't know that song. When you hear that song, you're going to relate to it. You're going to go, yeah, that was me too, just like that. Read that. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, be not, believe not no, every it spirit. Say that. Read it right. Beloved, believe not every spirit. So what does it say? Don't believe every Negro that comes up to you. That's what it's saying. Don't believe every spirit. Go ahead. But try the spirits. Prove the spirits. Go ahead. Whether they are of God. Whether they are of God. Go ahead. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. You got a lot of lies that have gone out into the world. And they use the Bible to manipulate, confound, and confuse. Let me explain something about proving. This is for the sisters. I always say, I always get hard on the sisters because sisters are the ones. That, now, how many of y'all was in Atlanta? Raise your hand. Let me see. Okay. Now, and this is to the brothers. Now, you brothers, you saw how many sisters was there, and the line was like way back there. And most of them, not all of them, I'd say about seven out of ten had kids already. Seven out of ten. Wow. What does that show us? Uh, <laughs> Let me choose some nice words. Uh, we got a message. A sister said, I would join y'all if I can pick my own spouse. Did y'all see that message? Sister, where's the camera? Which camera am I talking to? Sister, that's the problem. You've been picking your own spouse all your life, and you don't know how to pick. That's why you got all these women with all these little kids behind them. And some of them got different baby daddies. So, sister, you don't know how to pick. 
Now, it's not that they, they on the internet, Christian apologists. Oh, that Bishop Nathaniel, that weak, that wicked black nigga there. I'm talking about me. I listen to this stuff. He forced people to get married. I forced, they said I forced Gerald Ham to marry his wife on the boat. I said, wow. I forced him. I know I wish I know he happy about that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He happy about that. Yeah, we Bishop. he ain't speak to me for a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He Yo, was Bishop. gone. He didn't even go to the school. I Bishop, don't think. there was a godly. There was a godly uh, uh, ceremony. Yes. So they're against godly. That's what. Yes. That's what they talk like. Now I wish we did have the respect from the congregation where we could say, "Brother, you gonna marry that sister right there, sister? You married her." But we ain't got that kind of respect. Y'all be like, "Oh hell no!" Yeah. This is what we hear, right, Reuben? How many times? <laughs> I'm just messing with Reuben. Hey, a couple of sisters want to talk to Reuben. I said, Re I said, Reuben, you sure? He said, yeah, you, you're all right, Reuben. Don't start crying either. Don't start crying. You're my darling, darling, <laughs> baby. You're my darling, darling, baby. <laughs> so proving involves communication, questions, and Observation. I'm going to say it again. Write it down. Proving involves communication, questions, and observation. I told you, brothers lie. Men lie and sisters lie too. Sister, I see you have some children. We, it was Deacon Asaf, I think, said, do you have any baby daddy issues? They all said, no, no, just like their sister. From, that was from Atlanta. The brother said, I want to marry this sister. I said, brother, she got kids. He said, no, she's all right. A sister got any, any daddy, baby daddy issues? No. Late at night, they at home. You hear a smash through the window. Baby daddy bust through the window, rolled on the floor like a ninja. Yeah, out on parole. I said, see these women be lying and get you brothers in trouble. Y'all be all hemmed up. Oh, boy. And we warn you, brothers. <laughs> Brother wish that he know how to do some karate move. <laughs> <laughs> so people lie. That's what I tell you. Men lie. Says, now, we try to, the scriptures say, use not any manner of lie. We try to avoid lying. But I tell you, when people want what they want, they will lie to get it. Then at the end, you realize that person lied to me. So communication, questions, and observation, that's proven. Communication is very, very important. You got to question their goals, question their aims. You got to observe their, that's a good one I'm about to say, observe their financial responsibility. Yeah, the, some of the brothers that said they were financially well off, I was like, wow, wow. Some brothers said that uh, and they was broke as hell. I said, this dude lying. He drive a hoopty, this one ride the bus, he lying. And the women was like, ooh, 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 that's going to be my man. That's going to be my man right there. Yeah, okay. You go ahead with that. People lie all the time. I've seen it. I've seen it. But I ain't going to blow your spot up. I wish I, if I b start blowing people's spot up from what I know, I'll be the most hated man in IUIC. But I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to let y'all find out for yourselves. You speak to the camp leaders. Men and women speak to the camp leaders. And I'm, if you come to me on a side, I'll tell you if I know anything, I'll tell you. What I know, if I don't, I'll say, go to this sister, go to that brother, and you'll get your answer. So, you also got to observe not only his financial responsibility, you got to observe his or her flaws and ask yourself, are his or her flaws workable? Are they workable? Uh, everybody got flaws, but you got to, some flaws you can work with, some you cannot. If it's bad breath, you can work with bad breath. You might not like it, but that's doable. You can get some gum here. Chew all the gum. <laughs> Chew the whole pack. No, I don't want none. You just for you. <laughs> Eat the whole damn pack. If if it's if if you find out if it's like weed, you better you better take a, a hold on that. You find he take his wallet out and a little bag of weed fall out. Might be him or her. You never know. A little baggie with white powder in it. Oh, hold on there. Hold on. What's that? Or you, 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 they open a wallet, you see a condom in there. Hey, what's going on with this? Let me see that. Check the date. It might be this week. What the hell? He just bought that thing. 
He might call. You know what men are going to say? It's old. It was there from five years ago. Let me see the date. Oh, no. That says April 9th, 2019. The hell is this? Liar. So you better, you better check a brother. I'm telling you. So there's a, room, there's a lot of rumors going around on social media that we force people to get married, as I said. Give me Exodus 22. Let me show you the force you to get married scripture. God forces marriage. There's, there's a reason why God forces people to marry. Exodus, Exodus. 22:16. And Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. And this scripture is for you secretive, licky, licky, sucky, sucky brothers and sisters. Y'all know who y'all, some of y'all in here, I ain't going to point you up, but some of y'all sitting in here. You know, you know how the rush marriages, hey, you're, you and her getting married, hey, when we going to do a uh, wedding feast? No, 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 we don't need a wedding feast. We good. We just get, let's just sign, just sign here. So that tells me, hmm, that means there was some licky, licky, sucky, sucky, touchy, touchy going on here. Because you know, brothers, women want marriage feasts. It's the brothers. We could care less. It's them. They like this. They want to be seen. This is my day, my day. Look at me. <laughs> and when they don't want that, you, you got to go, hmm, yeah, you did something. And it's about to come out. Because somebody know here, somebody know. No, 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 no. See, they was doing something the other night. I saw them. They nasty, they liars. Yeah, Bishop, one sister tell the brother that the way she answered the brother, you don't have to tell them anything. I mean, because I'm going to be, a, uh, I know we just finished doing something, but my mom want me to walk in the aisle. Yeah. Don't say nothing. Exactly. There you go. There you go. Now, here's our force you to get married scripture. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. You know. There's a lot of enticement on uh, meet and greet. A lot of enticing words going forth. Go ahead. And lie with her. Now have sex with her. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. It's, he shall surely endow. That means you must marry her. Go ahead. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him. Why would he utterly refuse? Because the tradition, the custom is you go to who? The father. This dude obviously went around the father. That's why he was pissed off. It was like, I don't like this guy. What's the law that he got to do? Go ahead. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. That's right. He had to pay money for his um, slick, secret moves. Now, give me the precept to that in Deuteronomy 22, 28, and 29. It says the same thing. Deuteronomy 22, 28. Deuteronomy 22, verse 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found. And they be found. What, that means they was doing something secret in the dark, and they got found out. Go ahead. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. He had to pay the girl's daddy money because he was supposed to go through the father. Go ahead. And she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. See that? Now, those are the two verses that force marriage. But here we are in 2019. The judges are not set up where we can stone a Negro. Because Negroes at times say, no, I don't want to. We've had cases like that here in IAYC. We find out y'all was touchy, touchy, licky, licky, say, hey, get married. One of them, either male or female, says, I don't want to marry him. Or, I don't want to marry her. So, because you know what? They want to test the goods before the marriage. I got to see what he's working with. And he wasn't working with nothing. I'm not marrying him. Wow. So now we have no choice but to give me uh, 1 Corinthians 5. You may not decide. You may decide not to obey God's law. Then we have to classify you unmarried people as fornicators. And here's what the scriptures say about you. You, you had dealt with the man and the woman. You don't want to deal right now. Here's what the scriptures say. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Like that sister that was up here in New York talking, who walks around with a measuring tape in her, bag, in her bag. A woman does carry an evening bag at dinner time. Why does she carry a dinner, a dinner bag at evening time? This sister had a measuring tape with her. Talking about, let me meet, in the back. meet me in the back so I can measure what you got going on there. Who does that? I'm like, you a hoe. That's a hoe. Sister, if you listen, I'm sorry, but it's hoe-ish. That's hoe-ish. Read that. 
1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother. This is for you and the truth. Be a fornicator. It says don't keep company with a fornicator. Go ahead. Or covetous. Or covetous. Or an idolater. Or an idolater. Or a railer. Or a railer. Or a drunkard. Or a drunkard. Or an extortioner. Or an extortioner. With such an one, no, not to eat. So the Bible says you don't eat. Don't keep company with people in the truth who have those labels on them. Was that down to verse 11? Uh, that, was just, that was just 11. Read on. For what have I to do to, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? Within the body. Go ahead. But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore, what verse are you at? Verse 13 now. Did you read verse? You read verse 11, right? Yeah, I started at 11. You want me to okay. start at 10? I wanted you to start at 9. Okay. You started at 9, right? You read down 9 nah, to 11. No, I started at 11. So I'll start at 9 and come down. <sighs> 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. I know I said start at 9. I wrote unto you in an epistle. Not to company, not to company with fornicators. Don't keep company with fornicators. Yet Good. not altogether with the fornicators of this world. So Paul says, listen, I'm not talking about fornicators in the world. I'm talking about fornication in the body. Go ahead. Or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. Right. In order to get away from them, you have to die and get off the planet. That's what he's saying. So, Paul, I'm not talking about the sinners in the world because you, you have no choice, but you have to deal with them. But when it comes to the church, the truth, read. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator mm -hmm. or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one, no, not to eat. So he's telling us, don't keep company with fornicators. So if a brother or sister, if you're licky, licky, sucky, sucky, and all that, and we say, y'all have to get married according to the Lord, and you say, no, I don't want to obey that law, you have to leave as a fornicator. And then we'll tell you how long till you come back. Might be a year, might be two years. We will decide. Everybody understand that? Okay. I was confused. I didn't get it. So let's talk about love. That's a woman's favorite word, love. Love, 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 or is it lust, 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 lust? There's a difference. Ever been so in lust with someone that you ignore how bad they treat you? Some of you brothers know what I'm talking about. Some of you sisters, too, get knocked upside your head. You know what the scriptures say. You know what's going on. You just so in lust with this man or you were so in lust with this sister. They cursing you out. They calling you nigger. They smack you upside the head. Like, there's a, there's a couple here. The brother married to the sister. He's in love with her. She says, y'all know the story. I've told you many times before. She says, babe, I know you're home for work. You work 14 hours. I want to have sex. She, he says, all right, I'm tired. Give me an hour. He goes to sleep. She's sitting over the bed just waiting, looking at her clock. Hour goes by, 15 minutes, hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes, hour and 30. She balls up her fist and, and wakes him up. Bang, 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 bang. All in his face. The dude's eyes swole up. He had to call 911. You can't make this stuff up. So some of you, you know who you are. You know who you is. I ain't pointing you out. You are so in love, so in you will ignore the evil that's done to you because you are so in love. Now you will see the true men of God. We are not black men. We are the Israelites.
say that I'm a Jew with sound art For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's sound art man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.